everybody, I'm Alexis Sheffield. I'm the Boyle County Horticulture Agent, and we are here in Wadi today at Bel Air Blooms. So we're here with uh, the famous dirt flower baby, Ruby, and Anna, Anna and Aaron. Hi. And so we're talking about uh, some harvest tips today. <laughs> um, and just kind of Bel Air Blooms, how long have you guys been flower farming? This is our eighth season. Eighth season. So we've got some experts here, and so we're just going to talk about some harvest uh, and what you all you know any tips and tricks that you have to uh harvesting flowers at the right stage or you know what does time of day matter like what are the things that you have found that no matter what flower it is um it's kind of some rules of harvest yes ruby please tell us more um always harvest in the cool of the day so sometimes we harvest twice a day in the morning and in the evening yeah, because um, it's what, 1030 in and July and so it's hot 85 right degrees right now. So um, yeah, the things that we want to go, I've noticed you want to go first for your foliages, like shizo, basil. Um, I've noticed that Dara and forget me not, you want to get first and get them in the cooler pronto. Um, do you all add anything to your water when Only you harvest? when I ask you about it and you say, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so definitely the forget-me-nots, you add um, a little bit of hydrator. It's just like less than a tablespoon for a gallon of water, add some hydrator, and it really makes a difference. We harvest through the week to sell on the weekends at market mm -hmm. and for wholesale as well. Um, and so you're harvesting about every morning? Every morning, at least five mornings a week. Yeah. Yeah, and then eat probably three to four evenings a week, depending on what's open, because every flower variety has a different stage at which you harvest, and um, some of them open a lot quicker. <laughs> Lots to keep track of, right? When you're Lots growing, like, you know, what, you probably guys grow 50 different varieties of, yeah. of yeah. things, yeah, yeah at, at least. least, so. Lots of things to keep up with and keep track of. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> um, so we, we're harvesting in the cool water in the mornings. Um, are you all using clippers, knives? What's your favorite tool? Uh, we use, uh, I call them pruners. And we have one rule at this farm, and it's don't stick your fingers in the pruners. <laughs> uh, We've all been there where you're snipping, you snip <clears throat> a little bit too close to the finger. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, so always make sure your pruners are nice and sharp. Um, my favorite kind are Baco, B A A C O. And then make sure they're sharp, and then make sure your buckets are clean. And so, you guys, do you have a, a standard bucket washing day, or is it just like a constant turnover of buckets? Monday morning. Monday morning. Mm -hmm. And so, are you washing with just like a Dawn or bleach, or what's. Just a little bit of soap. A little bit of soap. Yeah. And just, just a little bit. Swirling yeah. it around. Swirling yeah, around. Kind of just want, use... You don't want any debris in the bucket. Right, so right. We use gonna... a toilet brush. Yep a clean toilet brush <laughs> and they're round and so you just go around the bucket. Perfect, perfect. Push Spray the, them out and yeah, stack them up. The rectangular bucket's different, but you know, <laughs> it works the same. Is there anything that you like to harvest uh, that maybe isn't as picky? Like you can kind of harvest whatever, you know, anytime during the day? Um, the Carspadia, definitely you can harvest it anytime of the day. It's not going to wilt. Nice and hearty. Little ball. Can't wilt. <laughs> um, I have noticed that the Lysianthus isn't too picky either. Um, nice and sturdy. Yeah, sturdy. It lasts out of water pretty well. So that lasts out of water a long time. Yeah. I've just got a flower sitting on the porch. It's been sitting there for 24 hours. It still looks great. <laughs> um, actually, the Echinops that's behind the camera, um, I've harvested it at midday as well. Okay. Yeah. Um, Anything that's nice and sturdy, sturdy of a plant. Yes. That makes sense. On okay. the other end of the spectrum, we have Dusty Miller over there. Beautiful overwinter Dusty Miller. Over overwinter there. Dusty Miller. It's <laughs> blooming. The blooms will do nothing for you, but um, <laughs> definitely like get up early to harvest Dusty Miller. Yeah. Put it in the cooler, put it in there with your hydrator, <laughs> and leave it for a little while. It needs help drinking. It's wimpy, huh? It does. Um, <laughs> not so much in the winter time when it's not hot, obviously, but it definitely needs help drinking. Um, Celosia here, 
it's not as temperamental with the heat, but I think it's also good to cut it earlier. What else? Uh, um, tell me about like your zinnias, you know, how, what, how's harvest on those? You guys go ahead and hit those in the morning or? Um, we hit them in the morning, but it's not our first flower we go to. We gotcha. would go to foliages and more dainty things before that. So um, you kind of have like a first thing in the morning, we're going to harvest the, the, the wimpiest of the bunch the and then go from there. Yeah. yeah. And then stop, you probably stop harvesting by what, like 10 in yes, July? Yeah. Definitely. I was going to say, it's hot today. It's hot. <laughs> Um, Especially in the tunnel. The cosmos. I would get the cosmos early. Yeah. Okay. Get them in the cooler uh, and then get up the zinnias. Uh, right, well, let's, say, let's head over to the little sunflower patch and we can show kind of the differences um, okay. on the harvest stage. So um, this is a pro-cut light, D, uh, DMR light maybe. I don't know. It's a little too early because those petals are not coming off of the face of the flower. So we would not cut this one. Um, right here, you see there's starting to come off the face of the flower. Um, here, even more. Um, we could, we can and we do harvest at this stage. However, um, we go more towards the open. There's one out here. Aaron just harvested, so uh, we don't have a lot to show you. This is one of the plum ones. See how they're all coming off the face of the flower there. Um, we can harvest at that point and it would be good to sell it market in a bouquet on Saturday or Sunday. So this guy is good enough, open enough to harvest. So I'm just going to strip the ex excess foliage. Like that. I've got my pruners. These are not my favorite, but they're all right. And then, there you go. And it's now cooler bound. The added benefit of stripping before you cut the sunflower is that you will be able to have somebody who maybe isn't an experienced harvester come back behind you and know exactly which flowers that they need to harvest. Now let's jump into proper harvest stages for some other popular Kentucky cut flowers. Alright, so outside in the cosmos, and as you can see, Belair has kind of already gone through and harvested uh, early this morning, but they left a couple here for us to show you. And so with cosmos, you want to get them at cracking bud stage. And so hopefully you all can see this one right here. Those petals have just started to lift uh, versus something like this is a little bit too early when those petals are completely closed in. So you want a nice cracking bud. And I'm going to pinch this one off uh, to give you guys a close up. Uh, of what that looks like. So a nice cracking bud uh, and that's going to give you the best base life. Uh, even something like this where those petals are just starting to lift is fine. Cosmos will bloom uh, off of uh, off of the main stem and so they will bloom in the base. And so cracking bud stage is what you want to get at. If you've got somebody who's all the way open uh, like this one down in here, uh, that's fine because what you can see is the secondary bud is at that cracking bud stage. So you'll still get a good uh, seven day base life out of these if conditions correctly. So Rebecca can be kind of a tough one uh, when you talk about harvest, uh, just because the bugs can get it is one of the reasons. And so a good one for Rebecca to keep in mind is uh, sort of that wiggle test that we're going to do with zinnias. Uh, and so these guys uh, would be ready to harvest because you've got a nice stiff stem uh, on there. This one is a little bit floppy. Sometimes the trouble with Rebecca is going to be just keeping the bugs off of it long enough uh, to get to this nice stiff uh, stage. Uh, as well as remember, Rebecca is one of your dirty flowers. And so it, that means it's gonna release a lot of tannins out into the water. So a lot of people like to use um, so, some sort of uh, CVBN uh, tablet, a little bit of chlorine, um, bleach, even a drop or two of bleach in your bucket can keep that water nice and clean. Uh, and you probably want to go ahead and keep these as only Rebecca in a bucket rather than mixing it with some of your other stems. Hello from the yarrow. Hello from the yarrow patch. Yeah. Yarrow, a wonderful uh, perennial Kentucky native as mm -hmm. well. Oh, this is a pretty variety. I think this is called Colorado Mix nice. uh, from GO Seed. 
Awesome. Yeah. So is yarrow one of the tricky ones that you need to harvest? Yeah, it is. It's um, the plant itself, the flowers. Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't have a horticulture background, so I learned. <laughs> well, you're doing like doing an amazing job for not having a horticulture background. <laughs> Thanks. Um, so, like, the flowers actually kind of tell on themselves a little bit. The ones that are ready are lighter in color. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this, actually. And this is sort of darker. But I think the flower has to be fully pollinated before you can harvest it and fully open. So yeah, like, it wilts no matter what you do if, if it's not fully, if it's not ready to go. Yeah. Um, that's for sure. So, like, this center piece right here is ready, but, like, these little side shoots, they will probably wilt. And so do you strip those off? Um, or do you yeah, wait? Yeah, often we strip them off, but that might be in the processing stage or the bouquet making stage. Gotcha. Um, the immature blooms or unopened at all, those are definitely just going to droop right down. Even and when harvested in the morning? Even when harvested in the morning, even if it's 60 degrees outside. So you're know. not doing anything wrong, that's just the nature of yarrow, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a little bit fussy, but easy to grow. Yarrow is tricky in harvesting. So we're here in the Lysianthus. Uh, these ones are in the high tunnel, but Bel Air also grows them outside. Uh, and so Lysianthus are a little bit more up to the grower as far as sort of how you harvest. But normally you want to wait for uh, the second a second bloom to open up on a stem. And so you can see this one, you've just got that single bloom. Some growers will go through and actually pinch out uh, this first bloom, which encourages these guys to open faster and a little bit more consistently. Uh, but it just depends on your growing practices. Uh, Bel Air likes to just wait, so this guy would be ready to bloom uh, and wait for that secondary bloom. Especially in the high tunnel, you're not getting those water spots uh, and worried about rain on there, and so you can kind of leave that secondary bloom uh, on, or that first bloom on, and wait for the second one uh, because you're just not as worried about uh, any rain or spotting on the leaves. So zinnias are some of the most widely grown cut flowers. They're easy, they come in lots of colors. We love them uh, as those summer, they love the heat. Uh, and so they're also one of the easiest things to test to see if they are ready to harvest. And so we do what we call the wiggle test. I'm sure most of you know, but you can see how that stem is nice and stiff. It's not moving anywhere um, when you go to harvest. Now, sometimes the tricky part can be uh, when you see petals that haven't unfurled all the way. And so if we look at these guys over in here, you can see how we can do the wiggle test and it's a nice stiff stem. But what we see here is that these petals haven't unfurled all the way. And these petals probably won't continue to unfurl uh, after we harvest. And so you can either wait a little bit while longer uh, and it'll do fine on the plant or you can go ahead and harvest it and just enjoy it for, for what it is. And now to show you one that's not quite ready to harvest, this guy right here. See how that head just kind of flops around? It doesn't pass the wiggle test. It's not that nice stiff uh, stem that we see on this guy, right? So that's what you're gonna wanna do uh, in order to know if your zinnias are ready to harvest.